work of the people of the Cherokee Nation. Help us gain wisdom and uh, understand the need to be compassionate as we move, move forward in these proceedings. And help us always remember uh, those that are the least among us and help us bring peace to this troubled world. Amen. Amen. Roll call, please. Jack Baker? Here. Eric Cowan Watts? Arnie. Bill Anglin? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Arnie Buzzard? Here. Julia Coates? Here. Brad Cobb? Here. Joe Crittenden? Here. Jo- Jody Fishinghawk? Here. Meredith Craven? Here. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. John Garvin? Amen. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Here. Tony Gore Jordan? Here. Curtis Snell? Here. Chris Stoke? Here. David Thornton? I'll entertain a motion to approve the October 29th regular session. So moved. Second. And chairman. Yes. I, uh, this set of minutes does not uh, accurately reflect the conversation, and I would ask that uh, on page five under Bill John Baker, uh, we at least put the word hogwash uh, in the minutes. Point of order. Earlier in that same meeting, I was point of order for much less language concerning anybody else's legislation. Um, although I probably should have done it at that point in time, but I felt it would be disruptive because of the number of people that point of order me doing the same thing but in more harsher terms. So I don't think it should reflect that in the meeting minutes. Can I the point of order? Yes. Is it possible to table the approval of the minutes? I have some concerns. I think some other council have some concerns about whether these accurately reflect our meeting and, and we could use this next month to <coughs> compile those and revisit it. We make the motion to table them. The approval. So moved. Second. Okay, motion's been made to say to table the approval of the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. aye. Roll call, please. Your anger? To table or not to table? To table. To table. Yes, no. it's to table. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Harley Bazer? No. Bill your coat? No. Brad Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghawk? Yes. Mary Frazee? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Costin Jr.? Yes. Tony Gore Jordan? Yes. Chris Stoke? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Carol Cowan Watts? No. Eight yay and eight nay. So we motion for Yes. yes. I have a question. Eight yay and eight nay. I don't want to ask Jack, but how do I go about asking for a form verbatim? I know Meredith's done it before. Or maybe I, I don't know why I'd address you or Meredith. Because Mary just said, had me do them on the landfill before. Okay. I'll. But Mr. Baker, part of the, I think where the problem lies with the part of the minutes is that her, um, the secretary that was recording her computer went down, and it is live streamed, but that's, that's the confusion in the minutes. There's no reflection on her. Her computer broke. <laughs> that's just a statement. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, Mr. Henry. Mr. Chairman, if you indulge me, uh, uh, the, the purpose of the minutes is to uh, give a, a reflection to uh, the public at large of, of what actually happened at, at, at the meeting. It's never uh, intended to be a, a, a verbatim uh, rendition unless you so you know, wish to have that, and then you'd probably want to go through the process of hiring a court reporter to come in here and tr- transcribe every word. Uh, one way that you can, uh, if you want... It verbatim, the Cherokee Nation already does uh, uh, every, not, not, every, not, uh, uh, not only is it recorded, it's also videotaped, uh, and, each, and a DVD is adopted or, or uh, burned of each, me- uh, uh, of each meeting. Uh, the purpose of the minutes is that if you had additions, if everyone's got the chance to review them. If you have any additions, you can move to make those additions into the minutes, or you can just say uh, you, you can move to adopt the, 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 the video recording or the DVD recording of the meeting as the official minutes, and that's the, that's the way it would be. Uh, that, that would, and, and obviously, you know, uh, uh, it is what it is on the tape, so, and that, that is every word of the, of the meeting. 
I'm not wanting the whole meeting. I want just like you all did with the landfill. We all just took the portion of the landfill. I don't want the whole meeting. I'm just wanting the portion of Carol. I had to get them. I asked Meredith about them one time, and she got the girls to do them just that one section of the landfill. And I'm just wanting the section over Carol. I don't want all the units remaining at all. Okay. Well. Now we can do a verbatim of that. It's not part of the official minutes, but to be attached, perhaps to next month's okay. minutes. Would that be acceptable? Well, my concern is there was a number of individuals on this body that talked during the tarot uh, agenda item, but there was only one or two that there are any statements at all regarding what they said in the minutes. And I would think at least we are to put in there who all talked and give a summary of what they said. I mean, there was an, it was as if there was only one person basically talked about tarot in those minutes. And that's what I find unacceptable. Uh, I would make the motion that uh, we approve these minutes attaching the videotape to, as part of these minutes. I the think the motion's been made to approve the minutes. I we ask for a friendly amendment to attach the Transcript of the tarot. I would. And who made that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Jerry's one of the tarot? No, that made the motion to approve the minutes. Okay, so I'll take step on. Oh, you want to know who made the motion to approve? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Council Watson, did you make the motion to approve the minutes? I don't think that did. No one did. Oh, oh, Brad did? Carol seconded. And Carol seconded. Okay. He's asked for a friendly amendment to approve the minutes as written with a uh, transcript of the tarot portion attached. I'll accept that. Uh, Ms. Watts? Okay. Will you accept? Okay. Okay. So, the motion is to approve the minutes as written with a typescript of the tarot portion, a transcript of the tarot portion to be attached to the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The minutes are approved with the addition. No. Okay. The financial report, the treasurer's Excuse me. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda and to include this resolution confirming the nomination of Brad Carson. It was left off of the rules. Second. Agenda. And would you like that? That is item three under new business. Yes, sir. Be good. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded to add the nomination of Brad Carson as a board member of Chicken Nation Businesses. Oh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The agenda is amended. Okay. Next we have the treasurer's report. Good afternoon. Um, on behalf of Cali Catcher and the Financial Resources Group, we have presented you with our report. Uh, it is short this month due to us closing FY09, trying to get the numbers correct and everything. We're hoping to have the first draft of that by December 28th, and then we'll go into audit with the uh, BKD. So if you have any questions on the report, I'll be glad to hear them at this time. Are there any questions? Okay. Okay. Next is Turkey Nation Entertainment, Don Labass. Good afternoon. I'm Don Labass. Uh, David's out of town and asked me to uh, uh, answer any questions that you might have on the report. Uh, for CNE and CNB, 
a little less familiar with CNB than CNE, but I'll try to answer any questions. Uh, a couple of points that, that weren't in the report for CNE, uh, just a couple of opening dates. The Hard Rock Event Center, uh, we're looking to open September 1st now. And then the hotel at West Siloam, I think we're looking at a July 4th opening date. So those dates weren't in the report. Another thing that's kind of a combined CNE, CNB event, we closed on the acquisition of an IT services company during the month of September, which kind of kicked off CNE's diversification uh, efforts. It was a combined effort with CNB. So, any any questions I can answer on either report? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Ms. Pichino. Yeah. Can you get back to me on the Hard Rock Event Center? How many subs was Carol, please? Uh, yeah. I'll and also, <coughs> I had read a letter from Darren in this committee like a month or two ago uh -huh. about Flipco and what some of their people had said about the nation and our turkeys. And David was supposed to get back to me, and he never had. Okay. And I'll tell you what really bothers me the most about that is I sit here and watch this make NSU change their name because it was offensive, and we don't give them any money, but with Flitco, we give them hundreds of millions, and they were allowed to say stuff about us, and we had not done anything about it. Okay. okay. So Tara subs and comments from Flitco. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Kellen Watts. Thank you. Because this has the potential to impact uh, a tribal citizen's uh, reputation and such. For the record, I'm not going to say names, but I did ask internally as an advisory board member to the CNE board about this situation. And to clarify for the record, I understand it was not Flitco. It was one of our own Cherokee tribal citizens who said what was said, and there was internal personnel issues around it. Uh, and also, Flitco is an Indian-owned or Cherokee-owned company, so it's not necessarily in the context of external people identifying us. Mm -hmm. This was an internal issue even. And I know the individual and the, the person's identifiable as a charity, if that makes any difference uh, to anyone. Uh, but just for the record, I understand it is not Flint Co. Not saying that other but stuff hasn't happened, but this particular situation, we should not be But you'll have Mr. Stewart get back to us. I will. Jack, I don't think she knows which one I'm talking about. He'll know. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Watts? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Next is Cherokee Nation Industries, Mr. Borstad. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I believe you have my uh, report for September. That's our preliminary results uh, for September. End the year, BKD will start to audit those results starting this coming Monday. Uh, profit for the month was $263,000 for the month of September. Our year wound up with a loss of a uh, million oh eighty nine, and a large part of that was uh, our construction business segment. I don't expect uh, any material adjustments as part of BKD's audit. Do you have any questions on the month of September? Any questions for Mr. Borstad? Mm -hmm. Ms. Fitching off. Yeah, when do you all think Red Wing is going to turn around again? i got good news for you. <laughs> I was just going to talk about uh, October right now. Uh, if there's no questions for September, October we had a, um, a very good month. Uh, our budget was a loss of $393,000. Our profit was $176,000. A large part of that was uh, our staffing services group. During the uh, summer, they received uh, substantially more contracts than we had anticipated with uh, higher revenue and higher gross profit margin. So that was good news. And that um, effect of that will um, be throughout the course of fiscal 10. So we'll see that impact every month. So that was good news. Uh, Red Wing, their budget was for a profit of $20,000. Uh, before corporate overhead, they had a profit of 103. And with corporate overhead, they had a profit of $82,000.
their gross profit margin was higher, their revenue was uh, a little bit low, but the gross profit margin exceeded uh, that shortfall. They had um, um, also a reduction in operating expenses of about $15,000. So all in all, Red Wing did very good. So in, in total, uh, our profit was 176 versus a budgeted loss of 393. So we exceeded our uh, budget by $556,000, and uh, so we're off to a good start. And let's hope it continues all the year. Sorry, what? Okay. Any questions of Mr. Borst? Okay. Thanks for Happy much. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Career Services, Ms. Kelly. <coughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I bet y'all are getting tired of seeing me, aren't you? <laughs> Seems like every meeting you guys have, I'm there, especially when you have food. That's what we get today. <laughs> Well, my report's in your packet, and um, the primary two things that, that we have uh, been reporting on primarily was Tarot. I think I had given you all this packet, but we just updated the uh, graphs that get, were given out in the red folders. And then I gave you the blue folder today on our uh, day work program. I told you that we could get some quotes on how the money is being used and how the program has benefited the people. And uh, <clears throat> if you'll look at the one in the middle, I just want to give you... Heads up on this, the 300000 that you guys so graciously uh, have allocated will be used here to start working with these people. Uh, Curtis had asked about getting somebody to work with them on their job coaching skills. So Kelly Forrest, who's in our NAVTEC program, we're going to shift her over to help start working with those day work people. And we're also going to be working with any of the other participants out there to coach them on some life skills and work with them and uh, videoing them on interviewing skills. So that's one of the things that we're going to do with this part of it. But uh, we're going to utilize that for all services. And then we're just going to use program participants to help us get through this hurdle for the next few months. So if you've got any questions about day work, this is a report. And I'll try to give you another report as it progresses. Um, we had an economic <coughs> summit at Northeastern uh, last week on Tuesday and Wednesday, and your speaker of the council, Meredith Fraley, was one of our speakers and did an outstanding job representing you. And I think <coughs> Councilman Baker was there. Uh, don't know. I think maybe Councilwoman Jordan might have been there. I can't remember. But I know that some of you all were there and participated. It was a good event. I encourage you to go next year because it will be an annual thing. And then this Thursday night is our second annual Indian Owned Business uh, Banquet at the Hard Rock Entertainment Center in Catoosa. I would encourage all of you, if you haven't made arrangements, to make arrangements to come because we're expecting a really good turnout this year. Are there any questions? Any questions for Diane? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is Commerce, Ms. Knight. No, I just want to tell you, Diane, oh, thank you for staying on the phone for that way to find. <laughs> You're right. welcome. <clears throat> Good afternoon. You have a copy of my report, and I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Ms. Knight? We're getting off easy today. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Ed. Next are our consent items. We have the tarot certifications that begin on page 18. Plus, if you get on page 18, and then there's a handout of uh, additional. Thank you. Yes. Pastor Kyle. I have a question about one of these, if I may. Um, Diane, you may. I, I'm not advocating that anything's going on here. I'm just curious what happens when you get one of these. On page. 22 or 5 or whatever. You've got Delaware Resource Group of Oklahoma LLC. The address is 5721 Northwest 122nd in Oklahoma City. The next page, and the, the owner is, is Philip Busey Sr., 100% Cherokee, Delaware. The next page, same address, 
same primary owner, same skills and supplies, same address, different LLC. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying what happens on a site visit or a record, you're pulling records, what happens on something like that when you're, you're looking at that saying, wow, there's, I'm just curious what there, happens. There are, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm not sure if that's the one I was drawn with here, but he had a doctor's appointment that came, but there is a business that they do have when there is another business that he and his son have. Yes, correct. And I think that's why you've got the two different addresses there. And if you look at the job skills on the back of the certification, that breaks out exactly what they do. I guess what I'm asking is, if you do an on-site, somebody goes to you. Yes, Rob Boyd is the person who does those on-site visits, and if there hasn't been one made whenever the certification committee looks at it, they will recommend it, and sometimes they put them on college students, and sometimes they go for it, there's pictures, and they verify it. Okay, okay. I was just curious. I really don't know what was in the folder. A lot of times if they're out of the area, we request that they send pictures with the application and certification, and then we make phone calls in the area. We have certain people in those Oklahoma City areas. We have an office in Oklahoma City. Sometimes we ask them to check things out. Okay, I appreciate that. I'm just curious. Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank
frankly near perfect for years but has been dismantled but I do think that's an element that we ought to preserve if we are to uh, dismantle the program and go forward with something different so I, I worked with Mr. Hembry on some language and I don't know if it's been uh, I think the idea has been shared with some other counselors but essentially it would uh, it, it would provide for uh, donation contributions made under the SAC would be awarded equitably by district uh, but there would be a trigger date uh, upon March 31st of each fiscal year that uh, limitation would be lifted this would be I think somewhat of a well certainly is a compromise it certainly is watered down version of equity but it would allow on the front end of funding there to be some equity among districts and so as we went through the first six months of the fiscal year uh, we could be assured that districts would have a fair shot at this uh, at this funding and as we went into the second half of the fiscal year uh, then all bets are off every every uh, group in every district could certainly uh, apply and whatever funds were left and uh, so I would make that uh, I can get the language more precise but that concept in the form of a friendly amendment mm -hmm. I, I'm not opposed to that, but I thought I saw a written version floating around. I thought we were going to get a copies of it so everybody knew what we were looking at. So, is there a well, written? While while, uh, while Mr. Hembury is well, if he we can get copies of that made. I actually have some other amendments I'm not I can move on to. <laughs> That's not me. Do you yes. want to present that the language on that? Yes, side? Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, we have, uh, uh, prior to the commencement of this uh, meeting, Ms. Uh, Secretary Knight and I uh, talked with Mr. Uh, Hoskins uh, concerning the, the equitable deal uh, or, or uh, equitable concerns. And this is the language that uh, we jointly came up with. Uh, and I'll talk very slowly so everyone can get, get it down. It, <laughs> <laughs> good point, good inference. No, um, uh, donations and contributions made under this act shall be awarded equitably by district, period. Awards that inure to the benefit of multiple districts or benefit organizations outside the jurisdiction will not be considered in the calculation for equity, period. Upon March 31st of each fiscal year, this limitation shall be lifted. That would be a new section E, just following, I believe it's E. It would be, it would be a new section D, actually. We'll put it right up. <coughs> new section D. Mr. Chair, I would accept. Okay. And the second? Yeah, I was the second. Yes, okay. I'll accept it. Yes, you do. And there also, with respect to uh, the current paragraph D, it currently reads, um, make sure I'm in the right section. This would be, I'm sorry, section 5D is on page 2. It says the principal chief will only make awards to recommended projects that have unanimous consent of the subcommittee. The first problem I have with that is the word recommended because I understood the spirit of this would be whether it's recommended by the chief or not recommended, it would still go to the subcommittee. I think the word recommended, I'm going to assume, wasn't intended to be put in there because it suggests that there's two criteria before there'll be uh, a word, that they be recommended, that he gave it his blessing, and that it got unanimous consent. Would I be correct that that wasn't intended? Uh if I can, may address that, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, the intention here was that to clarify that these are appropriated funds that we're talking about, that the principal chief is tasked with staffing out any requests that come forward, which he'll assign to the government relations group that will be staffed out. He will then make recommendations as to which ones to fund, which ones not to fund uh, to the subcommittee or however the, the committee decides to handle that. Um, it was intended that the, the recommended projects that have unanimous consent, which means we have consent of both branches, are the ones that get paid by the principal chief. So D, I think your interpretation, your first interpretation of D was correct in that it's recommended projects that also have unanimous consent. If uh, they're not recommended, uh, 
you'll still get the information uh, on those requests and the staffing work that's been done behind that. Um, and then whether someone would like to choose to take that through the normal appropriation process, that would be their, their prerogative. And I, and I understand. But here's the problem is the earlier one of the number of, de of constitutional defects with the version last month was effectively a line item veto. The chief effectively had a seat in this council where he should not sit and could effectively veto. In fact, he did more than have a seat. He had a seat stronger than any of us because he had a single vote that could kill a project. What I had hoped, and maybe it was my optimism that caused me to read this differently than it's intended, two things have to happen before a check is cut. One, it's got to be recommended by the chief of the Cherokee Nation. And two, it's got to have unanimous consent. What I had thought, and I, I wasn't even comfortable with this, I thought the chief would say, here's ten projects. I recommend seven of them. Three of them I have a problem with. And then if the committee said, unanimously, we think they're all good, the check would be cut. But now I understand that the chief retains his line on veto, his effective line on veto. He retains his unprecedented vote at this committee because the word recommended in there. Would you be agreeable, and I would offer that in the form of friendly amendment, would you be agreeable, Councilman Kerr Watts, to uh, strike recommended from paragraph 5D? Because that really gets us back to the spirit I think we really need to get to, which is to get the chief out of this room. No, because with the intent of what I had hoped to do was avoid um, inappropriate, even potential inappropriate use of our money. Um, and so, I mean, he's just recommending, and the money's already been appropriated for this use, so he gave up some power to come back and have consensus with us. So I just see it differently. But, but with all due respect, I, I apologize. If the council's okay. done, I'd like to respond. Are you, Councilor Watson? Yeah, please go ahead. I mean, with all due respect, the the chief can kill a project by not recommending it. And if he didn't kill a project, then any one of us could kill that project, which I think is a problem. Institutionally, I think it's the wrong path to go down. But at least if we went down that path, it would be a member of this body that exercised one vote, which we were elected to have, to kill a project. Under this legislation, the chief says no to something, and it's over, except for the process that's always been available to us, which is any one of us could propose something to change the budget. But of course, the burden changes once that happens. Suppose there's a project that the chief doesn't like, and he doesn't recommend it. It's killed at the subcommittee level. None of us, none of us can force him to, to write a check, even if we unanimously wanted it to happen. What would have to happen is the council member who wanted that project to happen, or council members who wanted that project to happen, would have to find money in the budget. Not find money out of the $150,000 that's been appropriated. Find money out of the, out of the budget. That, of course, changes the dynamics because it, force, it puts the burden on a council to say, I have a project that maybe gets a majority, a super majority of my colleagues' support, but because the chief said no, because the chief said no, we have to go find the money somewhere else that, other than community assistance fund. I just urge my colleagues, don't put this burden on this council. I mean, this, I have said before, this boils down to power. That is the essence of dismantling the community assistance program. Now, I could live with something that was that would at least allow us to have some control over. I, I suppose I could live with one of my colleagues being able to kill a, a single project. I can't live with the chief of the Cherokee Nation getting a seat at this council. And that's what this legislation will do, so long as the word recommended is in it. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd like to address that because this, this, particularly this draft, was crafted very deliberately to, to better articulate, I think, what we see as, um, as what's happening here. One is we're talking about appropriated funds that have gone through the entire appropriation process. 
they were sitting in the budget, we were talking about $150,000, not the entire appropriation process. <coughs> $50,000 that has been appropriated. And what typically happens when funds are appropriated is that the chief is taxed with executing. He's taxed with writing the check. He's taxed with doing all of the work that leads up to writing the check for the purposes for which you appropriated the funds. And what this act does, in essence, is bring the council back in to administering how these funds are going to be distributed. And so what it does is allow for consent to happen. Um, and again, um, the council, any member of the council, if they chose to all be members of the subcommittee, um, could, uh, in essence, veto something that would be administered by the chief. And so um, while respectfully the council sees it as a line on a veto, I submit that the appropriation has been made. There is no veto involved here. It is administering the funds that have already been appropriated. Let's jettison the term line on a veto for the sake of this argument. The idea that this legislation, with the word recommended in paragraph 5D, builds consensus, I think, is borderline absurd. If the chief says no before it even comes to the subcommittee, it's over. It's over, Madam Secretary. Am I incorrect about that? Recommendations mean recommendations, and you can choose to accept them or not. It says the principal chief will only make awards, only make awards to, number one, that it's recommended. He's already made the recommendation. And number two, that, you, that there's unanimous consent. If he doesn't recommend it, unanimous consent is irrelevant. And recommendations mean that he's recommending funding awards, and if you choose not to make them, any member of this body chooses not to make them, they will not be made. Which is not a power that's exercised on any other fund that I know of that we execute as a nation. I guess I would put that now in the form of a motion uh, that the word recommended be struck from paragraph 5D. Second. Okay, the motion been made and seconded. So discussion. Dr. Cobb. I, I just need a point of clarification here. It's something that Councilor Hoskins said, and Melanie, you may need to answer this too. You're, and correct me if I say this wrong. What I got from your statements was, number one, you said recommended and non-recommended items would be sent to the back. On the non-recommended items, let's say the entire council <coughs> says, you know, we do want this to happen, irregardless of what the administrative branch says, uh, executive branch says and we send it back, you made a statement that we'd have to find funding for that mm -hmm. is, and, and I can yield time, I have no problem with that, to both, but it's okay with you. Is that correct that we would have to fund that from different funding? We could not force that out of community assistance? Is that correct? Or is that Hi, incorrect? Mr. Chairman, uh, as what I see is an, uh, an option that you have to consider every time you do a budget modification is that the revenue has to be identified, and I, I agree with the councilor in that respect. An option, however, is to say you're identifying to reduce this 150 yeah. by $10,000 and make this appropriation available to you. So, so we, so could, there is, we could force there, it out of the community assistance, is that correct? Yes, every appropriation at this point, because we have no un, unappropriated funds, requires a reduction. If that reduction comes from this fund, then so be it, if the council agrees to that. And I'd yield some time to Councilor Hoskin on that, if that's okay with you, Chair. It's, it, I agree. It's always been true that we could, if, if the money's there, we could identify it and spend it. The question is, do we, should we have, should we be burdened with that? Should the people we represent be burdened with that? And I don't think we should. And for that reason, I make my motion to strike the word recommend from paragraph 5D. I, I guess for me, when I when people ask me about why I'm concerned about this, I sum it up in, in one thought idea. We actually put more legislative time and thought and deliberation and process into giving away an old typewriter, typewriter or computer as a donation under our Constitution than we do a $10,000 check or a $1,000 check to, to anyone. So I am unclear why we cannot have more deliberation and 
research put into the people that we are giving money to, regardless of whether they're tribal citizens or not. And that is just my perspective. I appreciate your time, Mr. Chair. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and I, I don't think anyone could disagree with that. And frankly, I said nothing about us not deliberating. The question isn't whether we should deliberate. The question isn't whether we should have information because, in fact, this legislation does something good. It tasks the administration with giving us information about an application. <clears throat> the troublesome thing is that it, if, if the chief comes with a stack of information informing us so we can have an hour-long debate about one project, if he says, I don't think you should fund it, it won't get funded unless we jump through some additional hoop of amending the budget. And I don't think we should have to do that. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded that we strike the word recommend from item 5D. Are we still in discussion? Is, I was going to say, is there any more discussion? Councilor Jordan. Well, the, way, the way I'm reading this, any one person on this body can turn down a project. Is that right? Yes. Is, is that yes. Well, I guess then my concern is there shouldn't be any trouble if the chief don't want something. I mean, let's just lay it out here on the table. There's nine of you that'll fall in front of a bus for him. So why do we what need? Order? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, well, I agree with that. I don't fall in front of any moving vehicle either. for anybody. Period. I'm not going to take it back. You can want to order me, but I'm not going to take it back. So I don't see why we I got a lot more ideas about moving vehicles. Do I still have the floor? Do I still have the floor? Mr. Chairman? Yes. She has the floor. Yes, she does. What I'm saying is there's plenty of people on this group that can use their one vote to veto that. So why do we have to have that word in there? For the chief. The chief can talk to any one of 17 people here, and it only takes one to veto that. And that's the point I'm trying to make. The chief is already in the room. We don't need him here twice. Okay. Question on the motion. Okay. Question's been called. The motion to amend. Yes, right. Okay. The motion is to strike the word recommend from item 5D. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Roll call, please. Harley Buzzard. And how is the vote going to go? Yes to remove? Or yes no? to remove the word recommend. No. Julia Cope? No. Brad Cobb? No. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Jody Fishinghawk? Yes. <coughs> Meredith Fraley? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Austin Jr.? Yes. Tyler Lord Jordan? Yes. Chris Stoke? No. Bernard <coughs> Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Caroline <coughs> Watt? No. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. Eight yay, eight nine. Okay, the motion fails. Fast still the motion, Mr. Chairman. Pardon? Fast still the motion. Yes. Although we had it for almost 20 minutes, but yes, continue. Um, I would make a motion to strike Section 6 of the legislation. This, as I understand it, would repeal the existing Community Assistance Act. Um, there's really no need to appeal it. We haven't funded it. Um, we may choose to fund it at some point. We may get down the road with this piece of legislation and find out that it is problematic. But we can still pass this without repealing community assistance. There's nothing inconsistent, and I'll, I'll defer to Mr. Henry, but I don't think there's anything inconsistent about keeping the community assistance law on the books and passing this. The question is whether it's funded or not. Uh, we may get down the road and realize that this legislation is not working and we'll already have a vehicle in place that frankly worked for years and it'll just be a matter of shifting some available funds over to it. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd move to strike section six. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of striking section six, say aye. 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 
And those opposed, same sign. Aye. Aye. Roll call, please. Chair Conn wants? No. David Thornton? Curtis Snell? Yes. Chris Soap? No. Angelo Jordan? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Don Garvin? No. Janelle Fulbright? No. Mary Fraley? Yes. Jody Fishinghaw? Yes. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Brad Cobb? No. Julia Coates? No. Harley Bazard? No. Jack Baker? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Bill Anglin? No. Seven yay, nine nay. Okay, nine nay, motion fails. And finally, Mr. Chairman, I move to strike the word unanimous in paragraph 5B and replace it with the word two-thirds so that unanimous consent would not be required. It would take two-thirds. Okay, motion's been made that we strike the word unanimous in 5D and replace it with two-thirds. Is there a second? At least two thirds. At least two thirds. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 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 Roll call. Brad Cobb. Yes is for striking and no is for leaving as it is. Yes. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Charlie Fishing Hawk? Yes. Mary Fraley? For striking is yes, did you say? Yes. Yes. Oh, may I ask you? Oh, never, never mind, Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Janelle Fulbright? No. Don Garvin? No. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? Yes. Ty Grove Jordan? Yes. Chris Soap? No. Curtis Snell? Yes. David Thornton? Kirk Hyde Watts? No. Bill Anglin? No. Bill John Baker? Yes. Jack Baker? No. <coughs> Harley Buzzard? No. Three Coates? No. <coughs> eight nay, eight, 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 eight. eight yay and eight nay. Motion fails. Okay. Okay. Well, the motion is on floor to <coughs> approve the act. There's no further discussion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. aye. Roll call, please. Jody Kissinghoff? No. Joe Crittenden? No. Brad Cobb? Did you call my name? Yes. Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Harley Buzzard? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Bill John Baker? Got to have something, yes. Joe Anglin? Yes. Kirk Cowan Watts? Yes. David Thornton? Curtis Snell? Yes. Chris Soap? Yes. Ty Grove Jordan? No. Chuck Hoskin Jr.? No. Don Garvin? Yes. Janelle Fulbright? Yes. Meredith Price? Yes. Well, yes. Four names. Twelve, yes. Or no. Motion passed. Next is item five, an act enabling community assistance distribution to Cherokee Nation community organizations. Councilor Hossley. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to say that this legislation, just like the existing community assistance legislation, could be on the books, could be funded. Um, I would like to table this uh, until uh, next month. Okay, is there a second? second? Okay. All those in favor of tabling say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. Item five is tabled. Item six is Cherokee Nation Election Commission compensation. Councilor Frey. Mr. Chairman, after uh, discussion with Ms. Knight, and she would like to get together with some of us on council to uh, further deliberate and come up with some <clears throat> guidelines and principles. So I would ask that we table this until, you think we get done by next month? Until next month. Second. Okay. Motion to remain second to table item six. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? 
Okay, motion carried. Can I ask you to please look at the last time the staff over there received a raise? Not a merit increase, but any of them received a raise since the time they started working there. Until now. I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. Me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Under new business, item one is a resolution calling upon Cherokee Nation businesses incorporated in Cherokee Nation Entertainment to construct a new casino located in Ramona, Oklahoma, using entirely tarot certified vendors. Councilor Baker. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, I think everybody in this room is wanting to get to the point that our, our Cherokee citizens are employed, are contracted with, and, uh, and fully utilized and money come back into the, the 14 counties and at least stay in Oklahoma so that it can pass around seven times and it, it really makes for a, a much healthier economy here at home. Uh, the, everybody has read it. This is a project that if built, it's going to uh, be portable buildings. So we're really talking about dirt work, uh, paving, sidewalks, uh, some uh, utility extensions, uh, landscaping, uh, uh, sod, those kinds of things that we have tarot vendors out there that are competent and qualified I have, but after talking with, uh, with uh, some of the folks at uh, CNE, they said the only problem they might have is maybe on a certified sprinkler system, that they're not sure that we have anybody out there. So I would like to move for approval of this, changing the be it resolved to, uh, in the last, next to the last line, put the word qualified, tarot, qualified in front of tarot, and at the end, uh, end of Cherokee Nation, if available. I put this in the form of a motion. Second. And this, and yes. this is a resolution. This is not the law of the land, but it's our resolve as a council to get us to a point where we can start using our tarot vendors and using the tarot office to the fullest extent possible <coughs> to direct our tribal daughters to, to construct, and this is just a start, it's one, it's one place, but, but it'll be that first step. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Watts. Thank you. Um, this is much more palatable if we're not going to um, hamstring in a project that hasn't even been defined yet. Uh, that was very problematic. Um, I'm getting head nods from C and E that this is something that is doable, but I'm still concerned that we're we're focusing only on one project, and we're not looking at overall uh, what can be done for the Cherokee Nation. Uh, it looks like I can possibly vote for this. I'm still pondering their new language, but we shouldn't just pick on one project. I mean, this should be a commitment from all of us. Period. Um, you know, our hiring in both branches of government are, you know, we need to be looking at all that. Thank you. That's I totally agree with Councillor Watts there. And why don't we uh, make the resolution to say any project we have coming forth, whether it be casinos or clinics, since it's just a resolution and I don't hamstring anything, would you be open for a friendly amendment on that? I would. Which will? It'll add and all projects going forward. Okay. And the second one that I second uh, that's my thoughts. So okay. Okay. Uh, yes, oh, excuse me, Councilor England. And then. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I just want to make sure we get that in the right place. And and the, the other the heartburn I had for it was that. Uh, there's not a certified, there's not a tarot concrete manufacturer out there, so you're going to break the law immediately mm -hmm. as soon as you order the first one. I know, I'll, I'll just, let me finish up. Okay. 
so you're going to break the law right off the bat by buying concrete from Mid-Continent or Rainbow or anybody like that because there's not a Terrell certified concrete company. I'll go on record saying that because I know there's not, you know. And uh, so you'll break the law immediately right there if you don't put this language in. The second part is that I would like to have the Ramona name taken off of it because it's in our district and I believe that you could kill the deal. And I think it needs to be nationwide, <coughs> as, uh, as Councillor Fishinghawk said a while ago. I, I don't believe it needs to be just one project. I think it needs to be all projects going forward. And uh, and I, I think I can live with that. I mean, because I know we have Terrell certified vendors out there that are capable of doing the job. But I think if you just broad language like you've got it written, that uh, you're, you're going to break the law right off the bat. First load of concrete goes in. You know, so. So are you asking for a friendly amendment? No, I'm just wanting to make sure that, that uh, Councilor Baker has. Where did you put that? And, and that I mean, okay. if, can I? Yes. All right. Under the be it resolved, the district <coughs> above the word certification. What page? Uh, well, first. It's it's very it's the very it's first. It's new business item. New, new business tab one. The next to last line uh, says uh, Cherokee Nation Entertainment uh, be done entirely by, and I'm inserting the word qualified. And then after Cherokee Nation, if available, that'll take care of your concrete uh, uh, bid or. Uh, but I, you know, and and honestly, I was thinking the the concrete, the, the Terrell concrete uh, vendor would furnish the concrete, and uh, if he couldn't buy from a Terrell vendor, then that's what he would do. But anyway, uh, and uh, if it were a friendly, I would have no problem uh, striking the new casino located at Ramona and add uh, the words uh, all construction, uh, all Cherokee Nation construction. I, I make that motion as a friendly amendment if you are as the request. You accept it. Mm -hmm. And you accept it. The second is accepted. <coughs> Pardon? I thought that's what I'd asked Bill John earlier if he would make it for everything coming forward. Right, which we he are, did. But, but, but he, he had the, the heartburn with just naming the Ramona okay. project. Mm -hmm. So we're taking so, Ramona. So we'll just put all uh, uh, Cherokee Nation and its entities construction. Okay. Okay. Councilor Fraser. Mr. Baker. Yes, ma'am. John, you, you have discussed this with the business entities. And they are, they're accepting. The only heartburn they had was in case they couldn't find a Carol vendor, they didn't want to be held up trying to get one certified okay, or something so like that's that. That's how you're qualifying it is through putting qualified by qualified Carol vendor. Qualified and if available. And okay. Okay, Councilor Hoska. No, Councilor Watts. Thank you. I'd like to if it was okay with the council and banker, I'd like to be added as a sponsor. <coughs> Councilor Jordan. Well, we need to strike the language under be it resolved where it says proposed casino which is to be constructed yes. at Ramona, Oklahoma and put the language that <coughs> was put in the top <coughs> of yes. all Cherokee Nation construction. Yes. I'd make that in the form of a friendly amendment. Well, I think that was the intent was to strike Ramona okay, all the so way through. Yeah. Get all, all the way that through. out of there. Todd yeah. will clean it up. And okay. Just take it to all projects instead of starting with the baby step. We'll just make a giant leap. Third one. Okay. Okay. Councilor Fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to ask who all wanted to be added to it since it was the council as a whole and the council as a whole that's been working on it. Are there any others who want to be added? Is are you getting? Oh, keep your hands up yeah, while Gail writes it down. Call for the question. Okay. Questions have been called. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 
Aye. Two no's. Three and I. Okay. Okay, next we have our budget mod. Mr. Evans. <coughs> Mr. Evans. <laughs> Budget Mod had a $150,000 grant reporting reduction for the Environmental Protection Group Network Implementation uh, funds out of EPA. And we had seven budgets coming in at $6.6 .6 million. $872,000 is on the general fund uh, that's basically in the end of the now. With uh, $42,000 with the Marshall Service and a CNE contract. The roads construction uh, is requesting spend carryover for some capital project funds for $246,000 related to the Mill Seminary administrative parking lot that was originally funded for 250000 last year wasn't not hardly any of that's been obligated. The Benita Clinic utility request uh, has a budget of $584,000 that's been requested for the joint venture project. It was originally funded for 639 in the prior year but wasn't complete. There is a separate handout on that particular budget. I wanted to draw attention to it because um, that that item has actually about $14,000 more that did not get requested uh, just due to a simple oversight of there was an encumbrance on the books that uh, the requester didn't recognize and um, it's not going to convert into an expenditure so there's an extra $14,000, $13,656 to be exact um, that could be added to this budget and I'd recommend it go ahead and be added so the project would have uh, authority to expend it. The DOI self-governance funds increased to 75000 again, it's on the Marshall Service related to a reimbursement of expenses for the Peacekeeper mission from 2008. The award is dated October 28th, and the reimbursement uh, of federal funds is coming in after the fact. It creates a form of revenue windfall uh, as how it is effectuated and has been requested to be expended by the proper department. The department, however, received subsidized funding from the tribal source for equipment and supplies, and uh, I need to point that out because the general fund as well as motor fuel tax fund contributes to the Marshall Service as well as HUD funding as, uh, as well. And uh, I noted in the in the note the uh, proper justification might be requested as to why the tribal funds are not being reduced to free, free up those discretionary funds in the same amount due to these being unbudgeted federal funds. It's a mouthful, but what it means is. 2008, they spent $78,000, got reimbursed for it last year. It's coming into the budget process this year. Obviously, the, fund, the expenditure of funds that's being reimbursed for will not be repeated. It was for specific reimbursements for two years ago. I would just would have hoped that discretionary dollars that is subsidizing that particular program could have been reduced. So we bring in federal funds and we reduce the requirement on the tribal side. Um, moving on, there's a $4 million increase on DOI Public Law 102 in the child care program for FY09 economic stimulus funding. Uh, that's the bulk of this mod. And it, IHS um, also has some economic stimulus funds coming in at $1.5 million with uh, a roof replacement at Hastings Hospital for a little over half a million coming in and a direct digital control upgrade for $990,000 in this budget. Um, they also have an equipment uh, carryover request, $58,000 from prior year economic stimulus for a couple of camera fundoscopic cameras. And that completes my report, Mr. Chairman. But again, I, that separate note on that uh, 15000 for that project. My move to uh, adjust the budget is uh, Mr. Evans recommended with respect to the 13656. I think I heard that recommendation correct. Does that approve the entire budget mod with that? Yes. Okay. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded to approve the budget mod with the one adjustment that Mr. Evans recommended. Pastor Pishnock. Yeah, I was going to ask if you ever got justification for the discretionary dollars that it freed up. I'm just curious. And if you have it, could you share it with me when you get it? Uh, I don't have it, but I will. Okay. Any other discussion on the mod? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? 
<laughs> it's approved. <laughs> Very weak eyes, but it was approved. <laughs> okay. Item number three is a resolution confirming the nomination of Brad Carson as a board member of Cherokee Nation Businesses. Yes, this guy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Carson, who had been serving as CEO before his deployment, is uh, interested in coming back as a board member of CMB. Uh, he'll be returning, I understand, after Thanksgiving. Uh, so he'll be ready to assume those duties upon his return if you pass his confirmation. I hope I'm listed as a sponsor and I'd like to move to approve. Second. Okay. County Pigeon Hall. Now, Mel, can you get us something that shows the number of turkeys employed at CMB when Brad took over and then when he left? Because I'd like to see the increase. Sure. Okay. Councilor Jordan. Well, on the resume that you attached, is he still director of the of CMB? It says that from 2005 to present. He was during his deployment um, uh, and as you know uh, Mr. Stewart's been acting in an acting capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, he retained his uh, position through that time. Uh, upon your confirmation, if you do confirm, he'll be resigning from that post. Any other discussion? Motion has been made and seconded that we approve Mr. Carson as a board member of Cherokee Nation Businesses. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion Thank carries. Okay. Okay. Announcements. The next meeting is set for December 15th at 10 a.m. Are there any other announcements? Is there a PAC committee at meeting after this? Yes, there is. I have one question. Is it straight? Do we stream it? No. The sub tax subcommittee is a live stream. As in the past, we haven't streamed. One of my, one of my constituents asked about it today, and I'm wondering why we don't stream it since we post it and it's an open and transparent government and all that. Uh, well, it's obviously a, a, a public body. I mean, the, the will of the council, they wish to stream it. I mean, it's been posted it is, as an agenda item. And, Whatever the will of him. I don't have, as chair, I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Then we'll be happy to. And are you ready to start that immediately? For some reason, I thought we were video streamed, so I didn't realize, I guess, that we were. So, yes, I am ready to start immediately. If uh, okay. Well, wait. first we need to adjourn. <laughs> Two minutes. Let's adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor of adjourning, aye. say aye. Aye. Okay. So that people can go about their business, I'd like to start this meeting.